Hey there, this is Mike Kim. Welcome back to my Diablo 3 channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the monk and a build that I created for solo PvE. Uh, that means uh, most of the time I'm going to be spending uh, alone, uh, not with a group. Uh, most likely it will be in normal mode uh, because it's not really uh, worth waiting for your uh, getting into a group at that level because uh, the difficulty level uh, in normal and uh, solo is a lot easier as compared to grouping up because uh, each time you group up for each person in a group uh, the enemies get harder uh, uh, they have more health they deal more damage and uh, most likely you'll only want to be really full-time grouping when you're uh, I'm not even sure whether nightmare is going to require it because uh, even blizzard they announced that you're going to be able to solo inferno but uh, this is not at that level of course uh, we are not even at that level simply because all we have access to is in the beta which is up to level 13 so you'll notice that uh, all these skills are, or most of them at least not the the spirit generators uh, tempest rush and uh, well breath of heaven you get at before level 13 but some of your uh, skills that you'll see here are unlocked at higher levels and we have no idea how they work or we haven't even seen them uh, in action but uh, of course here's to speculation uh, even then you'll always want to have a plan where before you experiment uh, different skills out for the monk especially uh, you'll notice that I'm using three spirit generators uh, as compared to other classes uh, like for example I remember I was doing the barbarian skill build and I recall using only uh, one fury generator if I'm not mistaken but uh, over here they actually have a passive skill called combination strike for each different spirit generator ability you use increases your damage by 8% for 3 seconds uh, so this I'm not even certain how this will work because it unlocks at level 30 so uh, this might not even be a leveling spec uh, or a leveling build because uh, you'll only be able to use this at its full potential starting at level 30 with uh, combination strike it's a, it's a very I would say it's a very interesting uh, synergy between them. Uh, one thing you need to know about the the spirit generator abilities is that they always have three strikes, okay, or three strokes within the the three keystrokes of one spirit generator will provide you with three different strikes, and the third strike always has an additional ability. For example, this sweeping wind. Strike a target for 100% weapon damage. Every third hit creates a vortex of air that surrounds you. So the first two hits are normal. The third one will create a vortex that surrounds you. It's a vortex of air that lasts for 5 seconds and deals 20% weapon damage per second to all enemies within 10 yards. If any of you have played uh, Warcraft 3, uh, this is, in my opinion, similar to uh, Illidan's uh, Immolation Aura. Which means that if th the more often you're surrounded by enemies, uh, the more damage you're going to be doing. Because it says here it does 20% weapon damage to all enemies within 10 yards and it stacks up to 3 times for a total of 60% weapon damage. This is pretty significant. Um, you'll see I also added Inner Storm. As long as your Vortex is at the maximum stack count, you gain 1.8 spirit per second. I'm going to explain these 3 spirit generators one by one first and I'll show you how it synergizes together with combination strike. Crippling Wave, a series of large sweeping attacks that cause 110% weapon damage to all enemies in front of you. Every third hit damages all enemies around you and dazes them, slowing movement speed by 50% and attack speed by 35%. You'll, you gotta read this properly. It says here, a series of large sweeping attacks. Okay, I've tried this uh, in the beta and it's not only a a large sweeping attack it literally surrounds the monk so it's one huge 360 degree cleave around the monk which means even the enemies behind you are getting hit from this and uh, on the third strike it will reduce their movement speed by 50% and their attack speed by 35% if you watch my previous video uh, where I killed King Leoric uh, naked as a monk I was actually using this as my primary attack simply because uh, I was constantly being surrounded by his skeletons that he would summon and this would actually help my survivability because I would reduce all that attack speed by 35% just by spamming this ability and proccing the, the third hit every time 
Deadly Reach, this projects a line of pure force over a short distance for 100% weapon damage. Every third hit extends out to 25 yards. Uh, this is a pretty medium range skill. Uh, it doesn't actually mean uh, you'll want to use this as your kiting ability or anything. It simply means you will penetrate the, the first few enemies in front of you. Uh, it, it will deal a line of damage through wherever you're facing up to 25 yards if you use the third hit. The first and second strike uh, will, on will hit multiple targets like a mini cleave of sorts but uh, it simply does 100% uh, weapon damage. Now, why do you have three spirit generators? The reason is because of this combination strike uh, from what people have been saying. Uh, I was reading uh, certain forums, uh, forum pages that would say that using combination strike, you can actually increase your damage by up to 24% for three seconds. But each time you would use a different spirit generator, it would refresh itself. So if you combine your spirit generating ability uh, skills all together one by one or cast it uh, consecutively one after another. For example, sweeping wind, uh, let's call it skill A, crippling wave, skill B, deadly reach, skill C. If you cast skill A and you immediately cast skill B right after that, which is the first strike sweeping wind, second strike crippling wave, and the third strike deadly reach, you would have 8% times 2 that would last for 3 seconds and from after Deadly Reach you immediately went back to Sweeping Wind you would have 24% increased damage for 3 seconds and if you rotated between the 3 of them it would actually give you a permanent 24% increase in damage now the plan is basically to use Crippling Wave and Deadly Reach to keep AoE at bay um, because this would, uh, this would hit everything around you and this would reach further into the horde of enemies that are trying to converge on you and for the third strike I would use sweeping wind so it will, mo it will go something like crippling wave, deadly reach, sweeping wind I would have one stack of the vortex effect now I'll go crippling wave, deadly reach and sweeping wind again to because it lasts for 5 seconds right uh, the, the vortex itself so within 5 seconds I will cast these two and I will refresh the vortex with sweeping wind making it stack a second time and rinse and repeat till the third time and rinse and repeat once again to keep to, to keep refreshing the stack now you'll see since I've got my uh, AOE down to pad uh, as in the three spirit generators uh, synergizing with combination strike I picked up Manta of Evasion oh yeah I forgot to mention the rune stones uh, for sweeping wind I have the maximum stack count you gain 1.8 spirits per second and uh, Crippling Wave, affected targets take 15% additional damage from all attacks for 5 seconds and Deadly Reach would... the third strike of Deadly Reach increases the damage of all attacks by 30% for 30 seconds now 30 seconds is pretty long but on the other hand I wasn't sure in between uh, whether refreshing Sweeping Wind and keeping this buff up was difficult I have no idea but on the other hand there are other options here which says uh, critical hits with this skill generate 4 spirit uh, the thing is I'm not certain how much critical rating or critical chance the monk will be having so I decided to uh, go with something else but uh, if you see here piercing strident it says the second and third strike of this skill have an increased area of effect that would mean I would be forced to use crippling wave deadly reach second and sweeping wind is my third ability and I would be stuck here in this rotation forever um, this is fine I would say uh, if you're in solo PvE and the damage you are going to be dishing out is constant uh, until you reach a boss but um, this is more of a preference so I'm just gonna leave it at this because uh, once again like I mentioned before everything is up in the air right now and we are just experimenting and seeing how it works out but uh, no matter what build you have, I would highly suggest that you pick up one of their mantras. They have quite a f they have three or four, sorry. They have four available. I went with Mantra of Evasion because uh, these three were already my offensive abilities. So I went with Mantra of Evasion. I mentioned earlier in my previous video that it would reduce the chance of you. It would increase the chance of do your dodge by 25% and 3 seconds after activation it will increase it further by another 25% making it 50% for 3 seconds. Uh, it's spammable, there isn't a cooldown but there is a 25 spirit cost 
and here you'll see under the Crimson Runestone I picked up Backlash. Successfully dodging an attack has a chance to create a burst of flame dealing 78% weapon damage as fire to all nearby enemies. This synergizes very well with another ability I have here which is a passive skill called the Guardian's Path. While dual wielding, uh, which I intend to do, uh, most likely fist weapons, uh, knuckles or... Uh, I've discovered that a monk can actually carry one-handed swords and uh, one-handed spears. I'm not sure how I I feel about that, but uh, it's, it's fine. I mean, uh, monk carrying weapons, uh, other uh, sharp weapons actually, is a bit different from what I'm used to, but it, it's still fine. Uh, and it says here, while dual wielding, you gain 10% chance to dodge incoming attacks. While using a two-handed weapon, all spirit generation is increased by 20%. So with this ability, I will have a passive... 25% chance to dodge from Mantra of Evasion, which was 25% at uh, level 13, mind you, so it's, uh, it's stuck there. And 10% uh, is as long as you're dual wielding, so I will have a passive 35% without any gear at all. And each 35% chance that uh, when I dodge an attack, there will be a chance that it will deal 78% weapon damage as fire to anything surrounding me. So most of the time, I think I'll be spending within a big or uh, a, a large group of enemies uh, and clearing them out just like that. And as with any build, like I mentioned, uh, you should probably pick up a mantra. There are tr four, three others. You can check it out on the skill calculator if you want and test out your own uh, builds that you might experiment with when the game goes live. Here you'll see I picked up Tempest Rush. What it does is it runs for 15 spirit and an additional 15 spirit while channeling Unlike other games, channeling doesn't mean you stand there doing nothing. What it does is you can cast this and use it while you're holding it down, you'll be moving at an increased movement speed. What it does is run dire directly through your enemies, knocking them back and hobbling them, slowing their movement speed by 50% for 3 seconds, also deals 170% weapon damage while running. I took the Golden Rune Stone, which reduces the cost to 0 spirit per second, which means I will only have to cast the initial 15 spirit cast and the rest of it should be uh, zero spirit but this is a level 4 runestone i have no idea whether this is going to stay uh, maintain this way because uh, at level 4 the runestone does this uh, if what what if it's level 5 will it give me spirit for, for the longer i use tempest rush i i, I have no idea we'll find out when when we get there but anyway the reason why i took tempest rush is because like i mentioned before i will the, my intention of making this build is because I expect to be surrounded very often as I'll be the only target uh, uh, in a dungeon or in wh wherever location because uh, I'm going to be solo. And what Tempest Rush allows you to do is either rush or move to position yourself towards the next group of enemies offensively and defensively it allows you to prevent yourself from getting surrounded. Uh, one thing you'll notice from watching my previous video is that when King Leoric, the Skeleton King, summoned his adds and he teleported away, I couldn't get to King Leoric, especially when he blinked out of the screen and I wasn't able to click on him. The reason for this is because I had Dash Strike, which re requires me to have a target to blink towards. All right? And with, without him on the screen to click on, it basically means I had to kill the eight skeletons that were surrounding me before I could get to him. And this is very likely going to happen in Diablo 3 very often. If you do not kill enemies quick enough, you are going to get surrounded. And when that happens, there will be nowhere to run. You will have to pot. And when you pot, it will have a 30 second cooldown. This is not Diablo 2. You can't spam pots anymore. In Diablo 3, there's a 30 second cooldown on pots. and after that, it's pretty much you're back to a wall and fight to the death. Alright, and that's why Tempest Rush is in there, uh, to get out of a sticky situation. Finally, I picked up Breath of Heaven. This is very optional. Uh, I took the Obsidian Runestone. Increases all damage done by 12% for 45 seconds. Breath of Heaven is basically a defensive cooldown. Uh, it costs 50 spirit, which is half the, the amount of spirit I have. Uh, I, st I have 100, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it costs a lot of spirit, and it's a safety measure, you could put it that way. It's really optional, because if you're running this in normal mode, uh, and later maybe nightmare mode, 
who knows maybe you have a lot of gear for your level maybe you're geared for the level that you're at and you might not need breath of heaven because you're killing things so fast you're not taking enough damage to warrant it but the fact of the matter is that it's optional but even though i put breath of heaven in here as an optional skill i picked up the obsidian runestone because it still has a bonus of every time i use it i have a 12 percent increase bonus for 45 seconds so in addition to having sweeping wind crippling wave and deadly reach to increase my my damage passively by 24 percent by using three spirit generators with all this spirit at hand i needed another i needed a spirit spender which would be Tempest Rush and Breath of Heaven. You won't be casting Mantra of Evasion uh, all the very often, so you're going to be at full spirit all the time unless you're rushing all over the place, which means you do if you're rushing all over the place, that means you, that enemies are dying too quickly, and if enemies are dying too quickly, you do not need Breath of Heaven. There is probably something else you can choose that's better. And finally, for my third passive skill, I have increased my do dodge chance by an amount equal to 50% of my chance to critical hit. Once again, this is up in the air because we don't know how much critical hit chance a monk is going to have at that level. Based on the, s the, the skills that I have available, I do not see it happening. Uh, it could be very low, it could be high. That depends on what kind of stats you see. As of yet, at level 13, I haven't seen any items that have the increased critical chance. So this is quite unlikely unless it changes it after Act 1 or something. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, thanks for watching. This will be my skill build for a solo PvE monk. Thank you and good night.